Hello, everybody. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Good evening. Great. Yeah. Hi. Good to see you and hear you. Um, Imelda Sanchez is with us tonight. Also Gladys Campos, Jenny Sanchez, Luis Enriquez, uh, Paola Maria Alvarado, Alejandra Magaña, Sonia Guadalupe, and Luis Alonso Urias. Everybody be welcome once again to this class. I'm going to share the screen with you. If you just give me a second. Here I go. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Excellent. Okay, well, um, everybody, welcome. It's in Les Intermedio Modulo 3, and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service once again. This is Intermediate 3, session 15, and it's November 3rd of 2022 or 2022. So, welcome once again. Um, this is the, well, Tomorrow we will have the final class. Okay, so uh, today basically we're just going to have a review on the present and real conditionals. We're going to study some new vocabulary related to opposites. And uh, today they also, uh, I also received some messages in the afternoon. Uh, like uh, some of you were having some trouble doing the exercises from the final exam. So we're going to take a look at those too, okay? Um, I'm going to try to explain a little bit about those um, so that you don't get confused. Let's begin. So um, what's the lesson objective? Once again, by the end of this class, participants, we learn and understand the use of unreal conditional sentences with if clauses. So we have an exercise right here, and this is the last exercise related to this topic. Take a look. What do we have? Um, nothing new. Okay, this is pretty much the same information from the last time. Remember that uh, these clauses, or these sentences, I'm sorry, which are in this case conditional sentences, uh, basically have two clauses, two parts. The first is a hypothetical condition, and the other one is an imaginary result. And the hypothetical condition includes the word if, then there is a subject, and then there is a verb in past. This could be affirmative or negative, or even question form. Then the imaginary result includes a subject plus would or could. Also, might is possible. Okay. And then a verb in base form. Why is there a verb in base form? Simple, because would and could are model auxiliaries. Model auxiliary verbs can only be followed by a verb in base form, only, okay, no exceptions. So you have the sentence, if Mike had the money, he will buy a car. And as we have studied before, you can change the order of the two clauses and the meaning remains the same. You can say Mike would buy a car if he had the money. The difference is that if you begin with the imaginary result and you finish with the hypothetical condition, no comma will be used, okay? You need the comma only, only if you begin with the condition. In other words, if you begin with if, then you need a comma. If you don't begin the sentence with if, then don't use the comma, okay? That's the general rule. And well, we have uh, some exercises here. I'm going to show you a series of conversations. And uh, for each of them, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five conversations. For each conversations, for each conversation, I'm sorry, I want two volunteers. All right. I want two volunteers. Luis will be the first one. Okay. So Luis is number one, but I need another one. Who wants to work with Luis? Because Luis will read letter A. And I need a volunteer to help me with letter B. Who wants to try? Natalie. Okay, thank you. Luis, letter A, and Natalie, letter B. Let's begin. Okay. If you have three months to travel, where, where, where would you go? Where would you go? Correct. Very good. And then, Natalie? Oh, that's easy. I, 
I will fly to Europe. To Europe. Mm -hmm. I, I always want to go there. Very good. Okay, both of you. Excellent. Thank you, Luis and Natalie. Correct answers. If you had three months to travel, where would you go? We are using here the conditional, the second conditional, which is the present unreal conditional. That means that this person doesn't have three months to travel. This is an imaginary situation, okay? So if you have three months to travel, but we know in reality, you don't have the time, but let's imagine you did. So if you have three months to travel, where will you go? And the other person says, ah, oh, that's easy. I will fly to Europe. I have, I have always wanted to go there. So that's only a hypothetical situation. In reality, this person doesn't have three months to travel, so this person can't go to Europe for three months. Very good, thank you. Second one, okay, I need two volunteers, different people if possible, okay, because uh, sometimes the same people participate. Imelda, okay, you go with letter A and I need another volunteer for letter B. Alejandra, very good. So Imelda, please help me with part A and Alejandra with part B, please. If you, doctor, if you have told you, if you're that tour, well, uh, let's take a look. The will hypothetical, you. Con I'm sorry? If your doctor will tell you to get more, more exercise. Careful right there. Let's take a look. The hypothetical condition. The key word here is if. if. Mm -hmm. When you see if, the next part is if, in past simple. If so, your doctor has told you, mm, has told you. That's past perfect, not past simple. It's a different verb tense. What is the past of tell? Told. Mm -hmm. Only that. So if your doctor. If your doctor told you. Told you. Mm -hmm. You to get more exercise, which is a sport. Would you. Would you choose? I don't know what. Yeah, because after would, as you can see here, you need to use a verb in base form. So which sport would you choose? That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Imelda. If your doctor told you to get more exercise, si su doctor le dijera que haga más ejercicio, which sport will you choose? ¿Qué deporte elegiría? Right? Again, if your doctor told you to get more exercise, which sport will you choose? Very good, Imelda. Now Alejandra is going to uh, complete part B. I'm not sure, but I will go jogging two or three times a week. I'm not sure, but I will go jogging two or three times a week. That is correct. Thank you, Alejandra and Imelda for your participation. Very good. There you go. I stop. Okay, I'm not sure, but I will go jogging two or three times a week. Great. Next, I need two more volunteers, please. If possible, different people. Que no sean los mismos, Dora. Quiero escuchar los demás. There are 13 people connected, so oof. Tenemos para varios. Hasta sobran. Okay. So um, two volunteers, please. A volunteer for A, Amilcar. You'll take letter A, and I need another volunteer for B. Luis Enriquez. OK, let's go. Amilcar, you take letter A. Luis Enriquez, letter B. It's, uh, what, what would you do? What would you do if your teacher gave? Gave you and B mistake? An A by mistake. By mistake. Mm -hmm. In the United States, the grading system goes um, with letters. Okay, usually F means fail, that it's you didn't pass. Okay, and then you have uh, D, C, B, and A. A is the top grade, 
is the equivalent of 10 in El Salvador. So what would you do if your teacher gave you an A by mistake? ¿Qué haría usted si su profesor le pusiera 10 por error? Right? Le diría o <laughs> se queda calladito. Ok, Luis. No diría nada. No diría nada. <laughs> ok, Luis. Of course, I would say something immediate, immediate, immediately. Immediately. Imme immediately. Mm -hmm. okay. That's that's an honest person okay. right there. Okay. An honest person. Repeat. Good. Uh -huh. okay. Repeat. Of course, I would say something immediately. Yeah, of course, I would say something immediately. Por supuesto que diría algo inmediatamente. Okay. <laughs> that's a very honest person right there. Thank you, Amilcar and Luis Enriquez. Correct answers. Very good. Next. Again, I need two more people. Who wants to participate? Sin miedo. No, lo peor que puede pasar es que vamos a hacer la corrección pertinente. Y vamos a aprender, que es lo mejor. Mm -hmm. Two more people. Let's see. Who wants to try? There is Gladys, Sonia Guadalupe, Jenny Sánchez, Olivia Osorio, let's see, um, Michelle Escobar, and Jose Vega. Come on. Paola. Okay, Paola also. Let's see, Paola and letter B. Is your friend one tell to marry, marry someone, someone you didn't trust? Would trust. you mm -hmm. say something? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Paola. If your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust, would you say something? Si tu amigo quisiera casarse con alguien quien tú no confiaras, ¿le dirías algo? Would you say something? So, that's good. Thank you, Paola. Now I need a volunteer for part B. Sonia. Eh, sería, no, I will not say anything. I will mean my own business. I would mind. I would mind my own business. Mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's mind. right. Okay. Mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Thank you, Sonia. You have no, I wouldn't say anything. I would mind my own business. Okay, speaking of which, we have this uh, saying in English. Tal vez ya lo han escuchado. Mind your own business. Okay. Normalmente le van a decir esto a usted en general, ¿verdad? Eh, si le dicen esto, no es algo bueno, precisamente. Prácticamente es un regaño. Le están diciendo que no se meta en lo que no le importa. Eso quiere decir, si alguien le dice a usted, mind your own business, ok, no, no seas metido, no, no te metas en lo que no te interesa, ok. Una traducción más eh, exacta en español o más literal sería como encárguese de sus propios asuntos, ¿verdad? mind your own business. Entonces, por eso dice la oración acá, o el ejemplo, bueno, dice, if your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust, would you say something? And the other person says, no, I wouldn't say anything. I would mind my own business. Me encargaría mis propios asuntos. No, no me metería en los de otra gente. So, careful right there. También existe, that's none of your business. Ok, que es como, eso no es asunto tuyo, right? That's none of your business. Que uno también puede emplear para sí mismo y decir, that's none of my business. Si a usted, por ejemplo, le preguntan por la opinión, ¿y usted qué piensa sobre el, el matrimonio entre fulano y fulana? Y usted siente que tal vez no, no tiene derecho o no sería correcto dar esa opinión, usted dice, that's none of my business. No es, no es asunto mío, por lo tanto, me prefiero no opinar. You say, that's none of my business. 
All right. We're learning phrases here. Okay. I will need, uh, let's see, two more volunteers for the final conversation. Okay, I'm going to go back to the presentation now. So, two volunteers, please. Mm -hmm. Jenny Sanchez, okay. Jenny Sanchez will take letter A and one more person, please. Alguien que no haya participado, por favor. Atrévanse. Mm -hmm. One more person. Okay, Jenny Sanchez is one. Another one. Let's do it. Vamos, sin miedo al éxito. No one, one wants to try. Uh, well, Jenny, would you like to do both? Okay. Let's try. Okay. What would you do if you saw your favorite movie star on the street? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Be... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michelle wants to participate. Okay, but thank you. Awesome. Okay. I wouldn't be shy. Mm -hmm. I will ask for a photo and an autograph. And an autograph. Okay, correct. Very good. Thank you, Michelle and Jenny. Correct. What would you do if you saw your favorite movie star on the street? The other person says, I wouldn't be shy. I would ask for a photo and an autograph. There you go. Great. Great, great. Okay, now... You had some homework. Okay. Había tarea. Okay, so we're going to check answers now. Your turn. Complete the sentences with your own ideas. Ah, no hay excusa. Ayer era sueto, así que había tiempo para hacerlo. Veamos. What about number one? I want to hear um, several people. Okay, quiero escuchar a varios eh, decir las oraciones. Vamos a ir una por una. Entonces, de la número uno, no solo va a participar una persona, sino unos tres o cuatro para escuchar diferentes opiniones. Okay, remember that uh, for this exercise, you need to complete the sentences with your own idea. So number one, Luis Alonso, and then Alejandra Magaña, also for number one. Please, please. And then Luis Enriquez, also for number one. Okay, teach. Mm -hmm. I will be happier. If I could produce more milk. I would be happier if I could produce more milk. Okay. Yes. So you produce milk now. Yes. But you want to produce more. Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> great. Okay. That's great. Alejandra, please. Number one, again. I will, be, I will be happier if I had a lot of money. Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I will be happier if I had a lot of money. Okay, great. Ahorita todos dicen, eso mismo puse yo. <laughs> Todo el mundo está viendo lo mismo. Okay, Sonia Guadalupe. No, sorry, Luis, uh, raise his hand first. So, Luis, number one. Number three? No. no number one, number one. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'd be happier if... Uh, I, I would, no, sorry, mm -hmm. I'd be happier if, if I didn't talk about another person. I'd be happier if I didn't talk about another person. Okay. Yes. Well, um, okay. You, you have to, you have to avoid that then. Okay. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Uh, Sonia, number one. I will be happier if I I had a mobile house to travel. <laughs> I'd be happier if I had a mobile house to travel, like like an RV, like a recreational vehicle traveling. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, nice. 
Michelle, number one, please. I will be happier if I bought a big house. I'd be happier if I bought a big house. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, but big houses are very, very expensive. But yeah, great. Uh, Jenny, number one. I would be happy if I lose weight. Okay, uh, but you have to use the verb in past. I, I would be happier if I... Lost. Lost weight. Uh-huh. I would be happier if I lost weight. Okay. Okay, good. Very nice. Let's take number two. If I could go anywhere in the world... Okay, volunteers. Mm -hmm. Puede ser cualquiera. Aunque ya haya participado en la primera, si tiene ganas de participar, participe, no hay problema. Number two, Imelda. And then Luis and then Amilcar. Okay, Imelda. If I could go anywhere in the world, I will go to San Andres, Colombia. Okay, I will go to San Andres, Colombia. Why San Andres? Because it's a great beach. Ah, okay. All right. So you mm -hmm. like the beach at, at San Andres, yeah. Colombia. Okay, great. Okay, nice. Um, Luis, please, Luis Alonso. If I could go anywhere in the world, I will go to Dubai. To Dubai. Wow. Yes. Okay, nice. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. Okay, uh, Amilcar. If I could go anywhere in the world, I go to Brazil. I'd go to Brazil. Okay, which is I would mm -hmm. go to Brazil. Okay. Would you like to see the carnival in Rio? No, uh, Amazon River. Oh, okay. All right. You mm -hmm. like to see the Amazon? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Jose Vega, now, please. All right, teacher. Um, if I could go anywhere in the world, I will choose Switzerland. You will choose Switzerland. Switzerland. And sorry? Switzerland. In Sweden. Switzerland and Sweden. Switzerland. Okay. Switzerland. Right. Okay. For okay. the landscape. For the right. paisaje. Okay, for the landscapes. Okay, great. Yes. You will like you will choose Switzerland for the landscapes. Great, great yes. choice. Uh-huh. Great choice. I uh, I have seen a lot of reels on Instagram and also Facebook, right, showing yeah. the landscapes in it Switzerland. Wow, they are breathtaking. Okay, some vocabulary. Breathtaking. Okay, which is very beautiful. You go like, <gasps> okay, they take your breath away. So very beautiful. Yes. Yeah. All right, good. So um, someone else for number two? Anyone else? Okay, what about number three? I wouldn't be very happy if, no sería muy feliz. Okay. So Luis Alonso? I wouldn't be very happy if uh, we had more pandemic in the country. Oh yeah, I wouldn't be very happy if 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 the pandemic continued, right? Okay, if we if yes. uh -huh, something like that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you, uh, Imelda. Imelda. I'm oh, sorry, I. Ah, the microphone. I don't you. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, well, I will buy. Per, sorry. Three Num more. Number three. Number three. Uh, mm. I wouldn't be happy, very happy, if I didn't have dreams or purpose. Okay, great. I wouldn't be very happy if I didn't have dreams or a purpose. Okay, great. Thank you. Michelle Escobar. I wouldn't be happier if I were sick every time. If I were sick all the time. Okay, so I wouldn't be very happy if I were sick all the time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Number three, please. 
Olivia. I will be I will not be very happy if I did not have my son. If I didn't have my son, okay, or if I didn't have a son. Okay, great. Ahí lo hemos visto en la cámara. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't be very happy if I didn't have a son. Great. No sería muy feliz si no tuviera un hijo o a mi hijo, ¿verdad? Amilcar. I, would, I wouldn't be, be very happy if, if my father would die. Okay, uh, but in this case, I wouldn't be very happy if my father... Uh, my father would die? Mm -mm. No. Because you have if. When you, when you have the word if... Uh, die. Died my father died. In past, right? Ah, died. In past. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, uh, I wouldn't be very happy if my father died. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that will be very tragic. Okay, all right. Very good. Thank you, Amilcar. Jose Vega. Uh, I wouldn't be very happy if things keep rising in praise. I did not understand that. Could you repeat it? Uh, I would be very happy if... I wouldn't be very happy if things keep rising in praise. If things kept if rising. Keep, uh, si las cosas siguen aumentando de precio. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. So you can say something things. like, if things, where things. is the, here. Okay, if things kept uh, getting more expensive. That sounds more natural. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't okay. be very happy if things kept getting more expensive. Si las cosas se siguen poniendo más cara. Más cara. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. You. I, I went to the supermarket today. Oh, my God. Yeah. You, you want to cry, okay, when you go to the supermarket. Very expensive. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jose. Very good. So um, what about number four? Who wants to try? Diga, ¿qué se quisiera comprar usted? Ajá. Uh -huh. Imelda. And then Luis. And then the other Luis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I will buy more photography and lighting equipment if I had enough money. Okay. All right. I'll buy more photographic equipment. Okay. If I had enough money. Um, are you a photographer? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. That's good. To, um, let's say, what is the word for this? To upgrade your own equipment. Sounds like a great idea. Thank you, Imelda. Okay. Luis Enriquez. A good, I buy an expensive, expensive car if I were in another country. Okay, I will buy an expensive car if I were in another country. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Can you just give me a second? Just a moment. I think I have an allergy. Okay, I'm going to activate my camera again. Sorry. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Luis Enriquez, now Luis Alonso and then Amilcar. I'll buy a pickup if I have more income from milk production. Okay. <laughs> I buy a, a pickup if I have more income from the milk production. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Uh, you are very business oriented. Okay. Yes. Everything you do is yeah. <laughs> has to do with the business. Yeah. Great. Thank you, uh, Luis. Uh, Milkar. I, I buy an airplane if had money. If I had the money, what kind of airplane? What? What, what kind of airplane would you buy? An airplane, the, the motor. <laughs> oh, okay. Like a, a jet, probably a, pr a private jet. More or less. Okay, a or, or a commercial <laughs> plane. A uh, jet. More, okay, more, a jet. More, more okay. private. private. <laughs> You know, airplanes are very, very expensive. They cost millions and millions and millions of dollars, like a hundred yeah. million dollars each. Okay. They are very, very expensive. 
but yeah, yeah okay this is hypothetical so great thank you um alejandra i will buy an album for my favorite artist if i have enough money okay and who's your favorite artist oh well, actually it's a group oh, okay it's a group called bcs bcs mm -hmm. where are they from uh, they're so from South Korea. Ah, it's K-pop. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, good. All right, that's, that's good. All right, great. Um, now, uh, Jenny Sanchez. I, I buy a new laptop if I have more money. Okay, yeah, me too. I buy a new laptop if I had more money. Definitely, absolutely. Okay, so... Um, Let's see, um, Alejandra, Alejandra, did you just participate? Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> okay, great. And the last one, okay. Um, thank you, Jenny, by the way. Number five, if I saw an accident in the street, what would you do? So, um, Luis Alonso. If I saw an accident in the street, I will help people. I will help the people, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, good, good. Although sometimes it's it's um, if the situation is critical, probably it's best to just stay away because sometimes they need uh, professional assistance. And if you try to help, okay, sometimes things, yeah. things can go wrong. But yeah, very good sentiment. Okay. Imelda, then Paola, then Jenny, and then Amilcar. So Imelda, please. Pensé que no se había activado la manita. No me sale. Ah, como no, ahí está. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If I saw an accident in, in the street, I wouldn't know what to do to help. Okay, I wouldn't know what to do. Okay, <laughs> I guess it, it depends on the magnitude of the accident. Okay, yeah. if it's a, a mild accident and you see a person trapped and you can help the person out, it's okay, you can do it. But if, if, if it's a very bad accident and people are injured and... Uh, no. It's a bad situation, probably you should stay away. But so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what would you say in this case? Uh, if I saw, sorry, if I saw an accident in the street, you can say, I will, sorry, I will faint. <laughs> Me desmayaría. Okay, I will faint. That's the verb faint, desmayarse. Also, you can use a phrasal verb, which is, I will pass out, okay? Which is also, uh, desmayarse. Pass, pass out, no, pensé que pass out era como morir. Ah, no, it says pass away. Ah, pass away. Okay. Mm, vamos a ponerlo acá, pero no, no es lo mismo. <laughs> That's pass away. That's to die. It's a very formal uh, way okay. to say that. Pass okay, away. No, but pass you. out, mm -hmm, you're welcome, means faint. Okay, I'll write it here. I will pass out. Okay, uh, thank you, Imelda. Paola. If I sat in an accident in the street, I could ask for help. I would ask for help. Okay, yeah, help. These people are injured, help. Okay, great. Thank you, Paola. Jenny Sanchez. And then Amilcar and then Francisco Isaac. Uh, the microphone, please, uh, Jenny. <laughs> if I say, if, if I saw an accident, an accident in the street, I stopped to help and um, call, call 911. Okay, I would stop to help and call 911. Okay, sounds good. Great, thank you, Jenny. Uh, Amilcar, please. Uh, if, if I saw an accident in the street, I would have very scared. Okay, maybe in this case is I would be very scared. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I would I would be very scared. I would be. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Ah, okay. I would be very I scared. Be. Thank you. Thank you, Amilcar. Francisco Isaac was raising his hand. 
do, do you still want to participate, Francisco? Yes. Okay. If I saw an accident in the street, I will call the ambulance. An ambulance. Okay, I will call an ambulance. Great. Very good. Okay, everybody, thank you. Okay, thank you for doing your homework. Thank you for your participation. Now, we're going to do this other activity, which is about vocabulary. And uh, you'll be working together for this. Okay, so lesson objective. By the end of this class, you will learn verbs for describing events. But first, you need to study the antonyms. Okay, take a look at this. What are antonyms? An antonym is a word that means the opposite of another word. For example, hot and cold are antonyms because hot is the opposite of cold. Also, good and bad are antonyms because good is the opposite of bad. That's the idea. So what are you going to do? You will work together in pairs, okay? Um, in the breakout rooms, no, well, not in pairs because we have 15 people. So in groups of three, okay, then. Groups of three. Um, to find nine pairs of opposites in this list, you will complete the chart. For example, good is the opposite of bad. And in the chart, you have the verbs accept, admit, agree, borrow, deny, disagree, dislike, divorce, enjoy, find, forget, lend, lose, marry, refuse, remember, save, and spend. So, there you go. The first, uh, you have some examples. Good is the opposite of bad. So you have to find words with opposite meaning. No importa el orden en el que lo pongan, no hay problema. Las cosas es que sean opuestos. Okay, so um, let's imagine you begin with admit. You can write admit here. You have to find the opposite of admit and so on. I'm going to form the breakout rooms now. Let's see, five breakout rooms. Here we go. Okay, room one, Alejandra Magaña, Francisco Isaac, and Natalie Alejandra. Room two, Michelle Escobar, Olivia Osorio, and Sonia Guadalupe. Room three, Jose Vega, Luis Alonso Urias, and Paola Maria Alvarado. Room four, Griselda Mendoza, Imelda Sanchez, and Rufino Amilcar. And room, uh, room five, uh, Gladys Campos, Luis Enriquez, and Jenny Sanchez. I'm going to form the breaker rooms now and I'm going to share this exercise via WhatsApp. So everybody, please join your breaker rooms right now. Okay, everybody, please join the breakout rooms. Some people haven't joined the rooms. Please, everybody, join the rooms now. Uh, Imelda? Uh, teacher, no me apareció la pantalla para unirme. Ah, de verdad. Aparece en no la 4. Si no sé si es mi internet o... Posiblemente sí, porque la he asignado a la sala 4. Quiero ver. Y generalmente aparece un ladito de la pantalla que. Una notificación. Los grupos, pero no. Uh -huh. no. Me parece. Me voy a salir y voy a volver a entrar. A ver ok. Si ok, great. En la sala 4, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Room 4.
Okay, everybody, the exercise is now in WhatsApp. You can check WhatsApp for the exercise. Admit, admitir y Denny creo que es uh -huh, I think it's refused. Mm -hmm. Admit, the opposite is deny. Mm -hmm. Ah, deny. Mm -hmm. Admit y deny. Admit, deny. Admit y deny. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Agree. What is borrow? Remember we prestar. Oh. No. no, no exactamente prestar, pero sí tiene borrow. que ver. Borrow, borrow means tomar o pedir prestado. Y prestar es lend. Ah, mm -hmm. lend. Tendemos a confundirnos un poco porque en español ocupamos el verbo prestar también como para decir pedir prestado. Como cuando alguien dice, no tengo dinero, me va a tocar prestar, dice. Pero en realidad eso no está bien dicho. Tendría que ser, me va a tocar pedir prestado. Porque presta el que da, no el que recibe. Así que ahí tenemos. Borrow is pedir prestado ah. o tomar prestado. Also, lend, prestar. Okay, I'm going to visit a different room now. See you in a few minutes. Bye. Agree, sería disagree. Uh-huh. Remember is recordar y forget is olvidar. Sí. Mm -hmm. Remember. Remember. El, el de el contrario admit. Admit, refuse. Mm -mm. Uh, no lo encuentro. O deny. 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 Mm -hmm. Y de hacer, no. as, accept es refuse. No. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Accept, no. accept no. or no. refuse. Accept or refuse. Mm -hmm. The opposite of accept is refuse. The opposite of admit is deny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, ladies, uh, I'll visit another room now. Please continue. Thank you. Aceptes, aceptar y refuse uh -huh. eh, rechazar, creo. ¿no? Uh -huh. Entonces sería yes. accept con refuse. Con refuse, yes. ajá. Yes, refuse. Of course. Ok. And deny. Admit. Deny. Negar. Y... Deny. Yo creo que sí. Yeah. Admit. Mm. Deny. Mm. Sería... Admit. Admit and deny. And deny. deny. Admit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And I am for admit. Enjoy and uh, dislike. 
Yes. In this line. Yeah. Yes. This like. Okay. I'm going to visit a different room now. Please continue. Okay. Lend y return es lo mismo. Okay. Eh, borrow uh, lend. with return o lend. Lend. Is, yeah, is, is here return. Mm -hmm. Ok. Eh, dislike. Dislike, like. Dislike, like. Well, the verb like is not in the list. There is no. but. But is here uh, enjoy? Dislike. No. Mm -hmm. Dis dislike es desagradar. Algo que me desagrada. Dislike. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Algo que lo disfruto. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Antonymus. Exactly. Enjoy. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. It's the antonym. Uh -huh. Enjoy. Okay. Enjoy. Divorce, Divorce with Mary. 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 Divorce. Mary. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Fine. Uh -huh. Lose. Mm -hmm. Lose. Fine. Lose. I'm going to visit another room now. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Todo bien. Unas noticias así que llueve bastante. Sí, por zonas también. Hi, teacher. Hi. hi. <laughs> Have you finished? Yes, teacher. Eso. Yes. Ahí vi que estaban discutiendo el tiempo, <laughs> las condiciones del clima. Ok. Sí. Le puedo preguntar algo porque ya en la, en la clase ya no, ya no queda tiempo. Dígame. Tengo un problema con la penúltima, la penúltima, el, la, ¿cómo es? el penúltimo examen del examen final. La no penúltima puedo... sección del examen. Sí, uh -huh. no puedo contestar una, que es la tercera de esa parte. Vaya, le vamos a ver entonces antes de que termine la, la, la clase. No hay problema. Eh, es, es la segunda persona que me dice hoy, <ríe> que tiene una dificultad ahí. Ya lo pasamos, ¿verdad? Todo, pero, o sea, tengo que, hay que resolverlo. <ríe> sí, claro, claro que sí. Claro que sí, no hay problema. Ok. Ok, um, if you have finished, then I'm going to close the breakout rooms and um, we'll check the answers. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, everybody, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. You will have one minute to get back to the main presentation. Twenty five seconds. Okay, everybody. So it's your turn. Find nine pairs of opposites in the list, complete the chart. So you have good and bad. What about admit? What's the opposite of admit? Jenny. Refuse. Refuse, not exactly. It's a different one. Francisco? Deny. Deny, that's right. The opposite of admit is deny. Admitir, 
negar, okay? There you go. Olivia, well, sorry, uh, you have agree. What's the opposite of agree? Disagree. Disagree, correct. Very good. What about borrow? What's the opposite of borrow? Imelda. Lend. Lend, yeah, totally, correct. Remember, borrow, pedir prestado o tomar prestado, lend, dar prestado. Thank you. Okay, what about enjoy? What's the opposite of enjoy? What's the antonym? Paola. Dislike. Dislike, that's correct. Thank you, Paola. What about divorce? What's the opposite of divorce? Jenny. Mary. Mary, totally. Thank you, Jenny. What's the opposite of fine? What about the verb fine? What's the opposite of that? Imelda. Lose. Lose. Okay, Michelle is going to help us with the next one. Thank you, Imelda. That's correct. Uh, forget. What's the opposite of forget? Remember. Remember. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Michelle. Um, what about accept? What's the opposite of accept? Accept. Alejandra? Refuse. Refuse. Okay. And uh, the last one is, thank you, Alejandra. And the last one is save. What's the opposite of save? Jose Vega? Spend. Spend. Okay, correct. We're talking about save money, save time. You can spend money, spend time, etc. Okay, good. That's it. All right. Let's continue. Antes de continuar, algunos eh, compañeros me expresaron que tenían alguna dificultad en unos ejercicios que aparecen en la plataforma, específicamente en la parte, vamos a ver, del uh, final exam. Vamos a echarle un vistazo a esto. Part 5, eh, section C. Part 5, section C. Ok. Mm -hmm. so, son varios, ya vi. Ok, let's see. So... Siguiente. When you start listening, está el audio. Complete the conversation. Rewrite okay. sentences. Ante okay. penúltima. Yes. Ok, vamos a verlo juntos entonces, porque al parecer algunos tienen problemas en el primero, otros en el segundo, otros en el tercero, así que vamos ahí. Ok, instructions. Rewrite the sentences, use the correct form of the verbs. Remember, capital letters and periods at the end. Muy importante en estos ejercicios es que vayan en mayúscula la primera letra y que al final vaya un punto. Eh, recuerden que esto no los califica un ser humano, sino que ya están las respuestas dadas. Por lo tanto, se califica automáticamente, como ustedes ya lo saben. Así que... Cualquier cosa que usted ponga diferente puede ser un espacio al principio, un espacio al final, un es, dos espacios entre una palabra y otra. No le puso mayúscula, no le puso punto, le puso el punto, puso dos puntos al final. Eh, toda la oración puede estar correcta, pero usted se equivocó en una letra. Había doble letra y usted solo le puso una, etcétera, etcétera. Cualquier cambio o cualquier versión de su respuesta que sea ligeramente diferente a la respuesta que ya está registrada en la plataforma se la va a marcar como incorrecta entonces por lo general estos ejercicios son los que más causan problema precisamente por eso porque excepto a veces... la 3 teacher la 3 sí Vamos porque eso tiene un errorcito de algoritmo quizás de algoritmo porque hay una palabra que no está incluida en la respuesta mm, vamos a ver Veamos. Veamos la número uno. Uno por uno. So, turn out the lights, que es como turn off the lights before you leave. Luego tenemos have to. Have to. That expresses an obligation. If you remember, I think that was uh, section two of this level. 
Ok, have to. ¿Cómo nos quedaría esa? Veamos. ¿Alguien que le haya salido bien? ¿Que nos quiera ayudar? You have to turn out the light before you leave. Veamos. Thank you, Jenny. You have to turn out the lights, the lights, uh -huh, before you leave. Okay. That's the, that's the right form. You have to turn out the lights before you leave. Okay. Good. What about number two? No eating or drinking in the classroom using can't. Who can help us? You can eat, teacher. You can eat, eat or drink in the classroom. In the classroom. Veamos. You can't eat or drink in the classroom. Otra cosa que se nos puede ir equivocado acá es el apóstrofe. Cuidado con el apóstrofe. Mm. Se lo digo porque a veces no estamos acostumbrados a poner apóstrofes y terminamos poniendo, por ejemplo, esto, que es una tilde. A veces sí. en lo que estamos viendo aquí decimos, bueno, pero yo le puse el apóstrofe, ¿qué pasó ahí? No, no le puse uh -huh. un apóstrofe, le puse una tilde. A veces ese, uh -huh. el, ahí está el error. Entonces, ¿el apóstrofe dónde está? Voy a poner aquí el teclado, que no se ve casi porque le he puesto aquí el filtro. Está justo a la par de la tecla cero. No se ve. Bueno, no me veo acá, pero aquí está. Justo a la par del cero okay. está el apóstrofe. Así que cuidado con eso. A veces eso puede ser también. ¿verdad? No estoy diciendo que eso sea necesariamente, pero he visto en otras plataformas y en otros ejercicios automatizados que aparecen incorrectas las respuestas por, un, por algo así de pequeñito. Ok. You can't eat or drink in the classroom. And the last one. Take off your shoes here. Allow. Ok. Sí, esto está un poquito más complicada y de hecho me parece que... Bueno, esto es the passive voice. De hecho, que es lo primero que vimos en la primera unidad. Entonces, take off your shoes here, allow. Es un poco como confuso, digamos, el mensaje que se da en este caso, porque cuando le dicen a usted, take off your shoes, suena como un command, como una orden. Así suena, ¿verdad? Como, mm -hmm. Pero luego dice allow. Entonces, es como que me está dando la orden o me permite quitarme los zapatos. Okay. Creo que ahí está All la right. confusión. Veamos. Mm -hmm. ¿Alguien le ha salido bien esta que nos pueda compartir su respuesta? O en esta estamos eh, todos atascados. Yo creo que todos estamos trabajando. Ok, ahí, <risa> okay veamos. Queda you are allowed. Aquí está el passive voice. You are allowed. A usted se le permite, o sea, alguien más le permite a usted, ¿verdad? You are allowed to take off your shoes here. Probablemente, como les decía inicialmente, eh, parece verdad que la oración o la forma en que está formulado, digamos, el ejercicio da cabida a, a una segunda interpretación. O sea, no queda muy claro. ¿Me está diciendo que me los quite o me están dando permiso para que me los quite? Entonces, la respuesta quedaría así. You are allowed to take your shoes off. Or to take off your shoes here. Vamos a copiarlo acá para que se vea completo. Vamos a hacerlo más pequeño. You are allowed to take off your shoes here. Vamos a la siguiente. Y ya está. 
Yarian así, you have to turn out the lights before you leave. You can't eat or drink in the classroom. You are allowed to take off your shoes here. Solo acuérdese siempre, mayúscula inicial, punto al final, que no queden dobles espacios, un espacio al principio, un espacio al final, nada de eso. Y que cada palabra esté escrita correctamente, que el apóstrofe sea un apóstrofe y vamos a estar bien. Okay. Prueben ahorita si quieren. <laughs> Take. Ya, yeah. ¿qué pasó? Me salió malo aquí. Oh. To take off your shoes here. Que se prueba es que yo, yo sí lo he hecho. Qué raro. Sí. Porque yeah. en el. En Ese el, ya lo había puesto yo. Yo también. tuve, yo tuve el mismo nivel la vez anterior. Y aquí les voy a mostrar. Aquí está donde <risa> lo había resuelto el mes pasado y me salió correcto. Entonces hay un problema ahí. Ya sería problema de la página. You are allowed to take off your shoes. Ah, ya vi. Aquí está. Por algún motivo, la palabra here no está registrada en la respuesta. Uh -huh. Ya me acordé. El mes pasado tuve el mismo problema. Y yo, ¿por qué? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Y empecé a experimentar. Le quité la palabra here y ya me funcionó. Sí. O sea, tendría que Correcto. poderse con la palabra here, pero... Al parecer hubo un, un error a la hora de registrar la respuesta en la plataforma. Entonces, quítenle la palabra here y en teoría debería salirle bien. Ahí está. Vamos. Correcto. Ahí está. Bueno. Okay. Sí, ahí hay un error, pero no es culpa de ustedes. ¿verdad? Ok. We ran out of time. It's nine and two now. So... Um, por favor, los que no han llegado a esta parte, vamos adelantando de manera que lleguemos a ella. Todavía nos falta un tema por cubrir el día de mañana. Así que okay. invito a no faltar a la última clase, por favor, en la medida de lo posible. Y pues aquí nos vemos mañana, ¿verdad? A la misma hora o la misma okay, plataforma. <laughs> so, see you tomorrow. Good, tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night teacher.